Going into Black History Month, our story informs our vision. Good morning from Peace Baptist Church, the loving church of the living Lord. If you're joining us in our cyber sanctuary this morning, we look forward to another wonderful time with you. And if on site at 712 18th Street, Northeast Washington, D.C., welcome one and all. We've got a wonderful song selection from our men's chorus and a mighty word from God through our pastor, Reverend Michael C. Bell. And now, welcome Deacon Ashley Ballard here to take us even higher in worship. Hallelujah. I've been sick all week, but I know God to be a healer. Hallelujah. I ain't got no voice, but what little I have left, I'm going to praise God this morning. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Come on, all you people. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. Hallelujah. He's a God who made us, so we belong to him. Hallelujah. Enter his gates with thanksgiving in your heart. Enter his courts with praise. Come on and bless his holy name this morning. He's a living God and we bless you, Lord. We know you to be all that you are. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, somebody. Woo, hallelujah. Oh, I feel good this morning in my soul. Come on, he's a worthy God. We are going to start off with prayer from Deacon Tinsley and then move on to praise and worship. Hallelujah. Hey, Father God, just stay, say thank you, Lord. Because you truly has been good, Father God. Despite of what we're going through, Father God, despite of financial situations, Father God, different situations, Father God, we have things in our life that happens, Father God, but you've always been there, Father God, and you've been good, Father God, and we lean on you for understanding, Father God, and for comfort, Father God. So we thank you today, Father God. We thank you, Father God. We thank you for waking us up this morning, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for a church, Father God, that will glorify you, Father God. And as I come today, Father God, I come with a prayer request, Father God, just for our pastor, Father God. I pray, Father God, on Pastor MC, Father God, that you would give him strength to lead this congregation, Father God. I pray, Father God, for his vision, Father God, for he laid his vision out to us, Father God. And I pray that you would be with him, Father God. And I pray, Father God, that we will be with him, Father God, to work with him, Father God, in his vision, Father God. Give him strength, Father God. Give him courage, Father God, to say the things that he needs to say, Father God. Be with him, lead him, guide him. And bless his lovely wife, too, Father God. Let her be right by his side, Father God. And and I pray, Father God, for our church as a whole, Father God, that we will be leaders, Father God, and that we will all come together, Father God, and agree to disagree, Father God, for it's all just the lifting of your kingdom, Father God. We love you today, Father God, and we know you're going to do it, Father God. And I pray, Father God, that we would take our ministry, not just in the church, but we would take it out the church too, Father God, for you said in your word, go ye therefore teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to obey my commands, Father God. And lo, you'll be with us always, Father God, till the end of time, Father God. We love you. We honor your name and we glorify you today, Father God. We love you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Oh, singing and praying with my mind. We do trust that you have enjoyed the service thus far. And now with open hearts, we receive a word from the Lord through the wonderful anointed voice of Reverend Michael C. Bell, our pastor. Hear ye one and all. That will bring new life. Words on the wings of the morning. My dark clouds will fade away If you speak to my heart Oh, 
Lord. Speak to my heart, Holy Spirit, give me the words that will bring new life. Words on the wings of the morning, my dark clouds will fade away. prayer this morning. I need you. I need you. I need you. I'm going to ask that you will join me as we prepare our hearts for uh, this morning's communal conversation. We will walk through the word together. Uh, it is definitely um, not going to be my intention to be with you very long at all. Everybody keep laughing at that. I'm going to surprise you one day. I'm going I'm to get up and say, Jesus lived, and I'm going to sit down. Today I hope to complete this series of sermons on vision and change. We have tagged the theme of this series from those lyrics which I'm certain most of you are familiar, Sam Cooke, a change is going to come. This series is rooted in the necessary conversation of this congregation as we move into another step and another stage in our transition. We are living in the images offered within scripture struggling our way out of pandemics, trying to address the evil in the world, trying to understand the varied aspects of the trauma and the trials we have had to endure, our own experiences of systemic oppression, being courageous enough to interrogate and critique the institutions of our communities that simply will not keep pace with the expansive needs of our growth and our liberation. That includes critiquing the church. We have walked through Isaiah chapter 43 with a particular focus on verses 18 and 19. But for the meeting of our moments this morning, I would simply ask you to focus with me on verse 19. In the New Revised Standard Version, no, you can keep your seats. God bless you. Thank you. Verse 19 says, I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? Then there is this last phrase. I will 
make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. If you will give me a moment to review for those who are just catching up with us today, either just now coming into the room or those who are watching through our online connection. Verse 19 begins, some versions say, Behold, I am doing a new thing. The word behold emphasizes the contrast between the old events and this new one. It also draws special attention to this new thing God is doing. The new event will be more important than all of God's past actions. The Hebrew word, it is a verb rendered am doing. Am doing is a participle. It points to something that will happen very soon. The New Revised Standard Version as well as the Revised English Bible, they translate and express this very well. They say either am about to do, and so does the Good News Bible. If that's the version you read from, it will read am going to do. This expression coupled with the immediate opening of this verse, behold, is something that ought not be glanced over. For it designates a particular posture that the Christian or the believer as one that should always be in a posture of expectation. We should always be expecting. Not, not necessarily expecting uh, to see what God is going to do for us. But more so, how is God going to reveal God's self in the circumstances I'm going through. Could it be that part of the reason we experience such depths of depression, such meandering moments of melancholy in our lives, is not necessarily because we are saddened by the issues of our present, but rather that we have been so convinced by the present moment, by our current circumstance, by the seasonal situation we go through now, we have been convinced that we can't see beyond our past or present. That what has been stolen from us is a desire to expect something more. Why this intrigues me the most is when we consider this for ourselves it is not merely some melancholy, some mental block, but it is critically immobilizing because it means 
death to us. We are in fact people who now live by faith. That's what you say. That's what you presume. Yes? We are people of faith. And the constitution of our being is about living by hope. I don't know what I'm talking about. Look, look at what you call the so-called definition of faith. Faith is the substance of of things hoped for and the evidence of things you can't even see. What is that if not expectation? People of faith, this is the way we live. Each and every one of our moments are about expecting something. This is what it means to live, expecting to take our next breath. That there is going to be a future for us. We live without worry that no matter the hell I go through today, tomorrow is coming. That if God be God, God is not through with me yet. <laughs> I'm not a prosperity preacher by any means. However, there is something about expectations. There is something about believing that there is something more awaiting you than just what you are experiencing right now. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Then the text goes on. This is just a review. The text goes on. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? This line is parallel to the previous one, saying that the new event is already taking place. The use of the adverb now, and then the verb springs forth, together emphasizes that this event has come suddenly, unexpectedly, springs forth. is a figurative way of saying there are already signs that God is working to rescue Israel. The signs, all They're already here. I I, I was trying to figure out how to make this point. And I was flipping through uh, social media and I saw this preacher or speaker uh, do this. And I I wish I knew who he was, what his name is, because I would uh, attribute um, uh, this idea to him. I believe in citing my sources. Uh, But uh, it made the point. So I'm going to try to show it to you all right now, can you, can you give me the first slide, Janice? Y'all, y'all seen this slide before? As many times as you have gone to send a package, I heard somebody say, you see, in the middle, between the E and the X, is a what? There's an arrow. I'd never seen that before. <laughs> go, go, go to the next one. Next one, Janisa. Uh, you, y'all, y'all, I know some of y'all. Y'all been to, to Baskin Robbins before. And, and what's, what's the slogan for Baskin and Robbins? 31 flavors. Did you know? Right
right there in the middle of the B and the R is a three and a one. I had never paid no attention. Go, go, to, the, go to the next one. Next one for me. Janisa, y'all, y'all, I know y'all be, y'all getting ready for the Super Bowl. You going to have your chips and your dips. And, and did you ever notice in the middle of the Tostitos are two people taking the chip and dipping it? I, I had never, I never seen that before. You, you can take them down uh, because it proves my point. For all of us, when the question is asked, do you not perceive it? It has been there. You hear what I say? That God, even when you are going through, that God, even when it feels like hell is on your tracks, that God, that even when you are overcome with trial and tribulation, if you look at the side, God has been there all the time. God has been showing you signs that God is still doing something new. This, this is, have you ever looked back over your life? Contemplated some experience, some moment along the journey? where it was evident you knew that God was at the center of your rescue and then the more you noticed, the more you thought about it, the more you looked back and reflected on the revelation of God's presence, you finally figured it out. God didn't simply just show up. I know y'all say that mess in church. He may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. Well, that might be your testimony, but it ain't mine. God has never left me. He didn't go nowhere so that he had to come back and check up on me. He's been there the whole time. You hear what I said? The book says, I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake. I just came to talk with y'all this morning. I don't feel like preaching, but that's good news. You can keep on with that mess all you want to, but the testimony of the book that he's never left and if you look with expectation God will show you a sign God is moving on your behalf mm. but the prophet is declaring on behalf of God that God said it's already happening. Do you not perceive it? We dealt with this last week. That this is a rhetorical question. Yahweh is making a strong statement that his people should be aware of what God is doing. The verb perceive is literally Translated to know. Better rendered by saying, do you recognize that God is up to something? And now we come to this place at the end of the verse. And 
Y'all give me five minutes. I promise I'll be out your way. Text says, I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. That's the new thing God is about to do. This, you must understand, those who would have heard this first, they would have immediately recognized that uh, the prophet speaking on behalf of God, is using the exodus imagery. God says he will lead his people through the desert that lies between Babylonia and Israel as they try to make their trek home. And here it is. A new promise has come. That God will lead those who have been huddled in the hurt locker of horror, heartache, and hell. Here is the help for those of us that are still asking to see the path. First observation that we have is, is that God will change. I know, I know. Most of us bristle at the idea because we have embedded in our minds that word that God will never change. But I've come to be not controversial, but I came to be confrontational. That there is more to God than you can fix in your finite mind. God is so big, so bad, so awesome that on one hand, God can remain the same, but God can also change. How do I know this? The text says, I will. <laughs> I will, I will. It's not something that we characteristically attribute to God. As one of the names. You recall, if you're talking about God, it is not I will, it is the I am. You remember, Moses asks, well, Lord, you want me to do this for you? Who should I tell them has sent me? He said, tell them I am. But here, God is doing something new. God has changed the tense. God is not saying just that I am, but that I will. I don't know about you, but I got happy on that point because that means something different for me. That means that not only will God be who God is, but when I need him most, God will also be all of what I need God to be. God will. This gives us the character of God. It tells us that God is not static nor stoic. The God, the God we serve, the God we worship, the God we believe in is a God who is always in process. He is not sitting in one static location and then has to react to something new you've given him no no God walks with me God talks with me God tells me I got you Michael that's 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 who yes you've heard it that God never changes but here in the text God has introduced a new aspect of God's character God heretofore has only been the I am, but here God is the I will. Uh, let, let me, I said five minutes, Lord. Let me give you one illustration. I, I, I learned this because I am someone who uh, I need to see the path. I need, to, I need to know where it is I'm going. I need to see the destination before I get started. 
Doesn't matter. Even if I know the direction, when I get in my car, first thing I do is I plug in my GPS. I, I, I have a preference for this uh, application. It's not that new now. You probably heard of it. It's called Waze. I, I like Waze because Waze is a socially interactive application. What it means is, is that Waze takes all of the information from all of the other drivers and walkers and buses and trains and it puts it all together. And then when Waze figure out the route that you're going to take, Waze talks to the other folk who have gone ahead of you and then it communicates back to you what's going on ahead. That's, that's, why, that's why I like Waze. I got another reason I like Waze because I have what is uh, medically diagnosed as a heavy foot. And, and, and Waze lets me know, uh, Michael, there's a camera about two blocks up. I know you saw that 25. You're doing 50. You might. Won't slow it down. So, so, so I like, I like this. And, and where I'm going with this is, is that uh, 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 what, what Waze also does for me is that it gathers information from the other people who are traveling the same route I'm taking. And Waze will communicate back to me Michael, if we're going to make your destination on time, we're going to have to take a detour because the way ahead is congested. There was an accident up ahead. Michael, you know the destination, but I'm telling you the path. Y'all, y'all don't see me coming. That's exactly what God will do. God will tell you that he means nothing but good for you. God will tell you he means for you to prosper and to be in health even as your soul shall prosper. God will tell you I mean nothing for you but life and life more abundantly. But we got some details. <laughs> Ah! All right. I, I, don't, I don't think I'm finished with that point, but I'm going on. I told y'all, told, told you five minutes. God, God will change. God, God will change the path. Second, second thing we see is that not only, as the text says, I will, but it also says, I will make a way in the wilderness. That tells me that not only will God change, God will also create. <laughs> oh, Lord, I got to go. Lord, I've been up here that long? Okay. I will make a way in the wilderness. This suggests from the memory of the people is that the last time we remember God giving us direction, we had to wander through the wilderness. I'm not going to take ownership that it was my fault. I know you told us to go into the land then, but we decided not to. And what you did was you shut down the GPS system. You killed the satellite feed, and now we had to wander for 40 years. Trying to get somewhere, it should have taken only 40 days. But this time, God says, I see. It's more trouble to have you figure it out 
than to do what I need to do in order to get you there. So this time, I'm going to make a way. But here's the catch that most upsets most of us. It still means you got to go to the wilderness. <laughs> Woo! This tells me that the God we are in relationship with is not so much about fixing and forming our lives that everything is going to be easy. But it is a matter of our maturing our faith so that we can develop a sense of trusting God that no matter the environment, no matter the wilderness experience, God will bring me safely through. If I had time, I'd show you pictures of our ancestors. God had to make a way for them. A way, grandmama said, when there wasn't no way. But I said five minutes. Let me go on to, to uh, last observation. God will give. I will make a way in the wilderness and I will do something that you will not even believe I am able to do. You will walk through the desert, but in the desert there will be a river. <laughs> I'm done. I ain't, I ain't messing with you. Uh, I just came to hopefully encourage somebody. No matter what wilderness you have to go through. No matter the trouble that you have to endure. If it seems like God has sent you to a barren wasteland. That the God of the Bible, the God of uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of my grandmama and my granddaddy, my daddy and my mama, the God that I've come to know because he walks with me and he talks with me. The God that has woken me up every day of my life. The God that keeps a roof over my head. The God uh, that put these clothes on my back. And uh, the God uh, that keeps food on the table uh, that God uh, that God uh, he will uh, give you uh, whatever you need uh, I said whatever you need uh, wow whatever you need uh, along the path uh, for you to journey uh, uh, good evening now y'all uh, I told ya my time is up uh, but I just came as a witness uh, to somebody in the room. Uh, you've had to endure some hardship. Uh, you've had to walk all alone. Uh, but God will, uh, God will provide. Uh, he will provide a resource uh, in the desert landscape of your living. Uh, God will, 
You know how I know. I'll tell you how I know. Because when I get thirsty, he offers me water. And not just any kind of water, but the living water, the water of the word, the water that washes my soul. Yes, he does. How do I know? Because when I'm in trouble, he's been a bridge over troubling waters. Oh, yes, he has. My God today, God will provide whatever you need. Whatever you need, God will make it work for your good. You know that last time you was at the end of the month and the month came and you were also at the end of your money. But God made a way somehow. Won't he do it? I know you know that last time the doctor said this is it. The last time they gave you that prognosis. The last time they said there was nothing left to do. God will show up in the mechanic of time. And God said, I got more medicine in the hem of my garment than all the doctors in med style or the VA. God will. Oh, yes, he will. Oh, yes, he will. Oh, yes, he will. I'm trying to quit. Oh, yes, he will. Yeah. Oh, yes, he will. Can I just ask one question? And I'ma leave you alone. Just one question. Have you any rivers that you think are uncrossable? Have you any mountains that you can't tunnel through? God specializes. I said God specializes. I said God. So after listening to the word of God and the man of God on this morning, I got one question. Can you see it? Can you see God blessing you over and over and over again? Has he done anything for you that you can look back and say, Lord, if you had not worked in my life, I don't know. Can you see him working in your life right now? That I woke up and I was just so depressed, but Lord, I thought about your goodness and your tender mercies. So I just need to know that if you know that he's done it before and you know he's doing it right now, do you believe that God will continue to work in your lives over and over and over again? All you need to do is say, thank you, Lord, for what you've already done. Thank you for what you're doing and what you're about to do. Hallelujah. God, I thank you. I so thank you. I want you to just sit in your seats right now and just think about all the messages that the pastor has brought us and think about how he's going to take us even further and deliver us into a change as the musicians are saying a wonderful change if there's one in the building right now who does not have God in your lives and you know good and well that you need to have him, just slip your hand right now and we will certainly pray with and for you. Is there one? 
Is there one who does not have a church home that says, I need to be in a place where I can grow and learn more of the Lord? You can raise your hand and let us know right now. You don't even have to walk forward. There is one. We thank God there. So we're going to have our church clerk. She's going to come to you over there in the cove. So keep your hand just raised for another. Is there another? I just want to join into a place that I ain't perfect, they ain't perfect, but we serve a God who definitely is. Is there another? There she is, praise God. As, as the church clerk is coming, we look and we'll ask you to just point. You can put your hands down, she'll be here in a minute, and then you can come back again. Now would you stand with me in the building? There she is right there, amen, I know that hand. Okay. I don't want you to look at your neighbor. I don't want you to look at your spouse or your spouse wannabe. I just want you to do me a favor. If you can, lift your hands up and say, Lord, I see you. Then say, Lord, I know you are. I know you will be everything that you said you'd be in my life. Then I need everybody who can say hallelujah to say hallelujah. Say it again so he can hear you. And then I need you to give him a clap in the building like you love the Lord. And then I want you to go doubting nothing because he is that good. So, Lord, we stand here right now about to leave this place, but as we leave, cover us with your blood, cover us with your love as we go to our different destinations, as we go in our cars, as we walk on the streets, as we fly in the air. Lord, we know that you will take us safely to our destinations. And then, Lord, bless us and we may be blessed. Keep us and we may be kept. Continue to teach us and we may be taught. For this we ask in Jesus' name, and everybody say amen. 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 Say it like you love the Lord. Thank you for joining us online. We hope you enjoyed the sermon from our pastor, Rev. Michael C. Bell. Here are your announcements. The next Children's Church takes place on Sunday, February 4th. Join us on the first and third Sundays for Children's Church, where students will participate in classes geared toward their learning and spiritual growth. Ministry leaders, mark your calendars. All current ministry leaders, diaconate, and trustees are requested to be present on February 17th and 18th. On Saturday, February 17th, there will be a servant leaders meeting at 9.30 a.m. Then on Sunday, February 18th, we will have our 2024 installation of officers. We thank you for your continued support in ministry and leadership. Are you prepared to take care of your loved ones after you have passed on? Now is the time to put financial and transition plans in place. Join us on Saturday, February 24th at 10 a.m. for an end-of-life planning session with Pridgen Funeral Home and Tiana Edgerton Insurance and Financial Services. Learn how to make final preparations to alleviate the burden on your family and loved ones. We are always looking for volunteers to serve with us. If you are looking for a way to give back, then we need you to support serving those who are unhoused and food insecure on 4th Sundays. You can sign up to participate or make a donation. Thank you so much for your continued support. Please see Lady Robin for more details. The Margaret Hicks Noonday Prayer Ministry will take place on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Simply dial 727-731-4642. You are invited to join one of our Wednesday classes. All classes are virtual and the Zoom link can be found on our website. Stay connected with us. Like our Facebook or join our PBC Members Facebook group. Like our Instagram page and subscribe to our YouTube page. If you'd like to use our online giving, please visit us at pbc712.org forward slash giving. This concludes our announcements. Thank you for joining us in person and in the Cyber Sanctuary from Peace Baptist Church, the loving church of the living Lord.